Welcome to the Level Up Your Band podcast, episode 71. Hello and welcome back to the Level Up Your Band podcast. My name is Gavin Patterson and I'm back live in the studio with Julian Pombo. Hello. Yeah, we had a we had a Zoom. Uh, we had to go back to the Zoom for one episode, but yeah. back in real life again. Your, your shock has been absorbed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the car can take, you know... All the shock. Sh- all, all the shock. Yeah, yeah. I can tell it anything and it's like, it's whatever. It's fine, just takes it in a stride. Um, for now. For now, when we did, uh, it wasn't it wasn't expensive to fix. It was like sixty pounds or something. Oh, fix that's it. It was okay. Right. Um, it was just one one bit of the shock absorber just rusted off and just disintegrated basically. Mm-hmm. And they were like, "We've replaced that one bit. Don't know when the other bits are going to fail, but right. Just when you hear that noise, that's what that is. And it's like, oh, okay, right, right, great." More money down the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's time I got a new car. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to start looking at new vans as well um, mm-hmm. for April. Uh, next April. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah. I, ha- I hate shopping for new cars, vans. Uh, um, is, is it the salesman that... Yeah, they just... Oh, I can't stand them. Yeah. Like It takes so much um, mental energy yeah. to try and like dispel with their... It's one of the reasons I've actually stopped going to uh, a certain uh, music store that sells instruments in the UK because it is very much like that, that experience. I I don't like it. They they, they are like car salesmen, but for instruments. All right. Yeah. Do you know who I'm talking about? You bleep bleep this out because I I don't want to slander (laughs) them, but... uh, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, like the lads in there are lovely, but they like as soon as you come in, you need to you, you're leaving with a guitar, right? You know, and you're leaving with like you know they they want to get you to spend as much money as possible. You know, and uh, it's like it's funny. I've been in there with my my uh, instrument and went in to get it serviced, mm. and they <laughs> they were trying to like get me to look at other instruments and like what about i'm like i just want to get it serviced i'm not yeah. <laughs> to buy another instrument yeah that's why you should go well, that's why you should support local businesses you know not, uh, not chains yeah no, not big chains if if you can you yeah know. yeah so um today episode 71 it's a really controversial one <laughs> It's not really controversial. Well, it's going to be it's controversial kind of. if you're a, a, a heckin' boomer listening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to get really triggered. So, um, um, yeah, the title of this episode um, will have clickbaited you to listen uh, and you won't be disappointed. So, Or to leave a really angry YouTube comment. You yeah, know, either yeah. way, it's a win-win. So... <laughs> Stop releasing albums <gasps> and EPs. What? Just stop. But, but Gavin. Yeah. If if we don't record albums and EPs, and if we don't release them, how how are people going to listen to our music? Telepathy. No. Um, <laughs> you can still record albums and EPs, but stop releasing them. So that that doesn't make any sense. But so. We'll go. We'll go into a bit of history, right? Mm. Um, so about how a, a long time ago, a long in a time galaxy ago. far away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's not even. I've put here traditionally. It's not even traditionally because I've said this before. Um, as a, an industry or as musicians, yeah. we've only been buying and selling recorded music for. Just like 90, 80, 90 years less. Yeah, I think less. Really? I think, in a big, in a honestly, big way, 70 years maybe. 1930s. I think this, yeah, I was going to say, I would even push that. I would, it would probably be like, you know, 
mid to late thirties, you know, so you're probably mostly thinking forties is when yeah. the sale of recorded music was a, a proper thing, I yeah. think. Yeah. You know. So it's not it's not even like, oh traditionally we would do this, but it's not it's not really it's not really like that because it's not been lo- around long enough to be even to even to, call it traditionally. Yeah. So um well that's that's one thing to to take note mm. because well, music itself is as old as humans are, which is, you know, somewhere between 100 and 250,000 years old. Yeah. Um, possibly older. Possibly older. There's... Uh, I mean, it may even There's evidence the that Neanderthals and, you know, uh, <coughs> other humanoid species... Yeah. Live performance obviously has been yeah. that old as well because, you yeah. know, you perform music live in yeah. front of people. But obviously only in the last hundred years has it been possible technologically to put down music onto a format where you can distribute it so that people can hear it without the musician having to be there. Um, it's a, it's, it's a mental thing when you think about it. it like, it's yeah. like, it's crazy that you can do that. Mm-hmm. And to, to the accuracy that you can get it as well, like almost as if the person's in the room with you. It's just, yeah. kind of take that for granted a little bit. And yeah, it is kind of cool. It's practically like magic. It is magic, point. yeah. yeah. Um, so in the old days, mm-hmm. um, when they started recording music, um, because they didn't know how they were going to distribute this, how they were going to market it, how they were going to mm-hmm. sell it. So they were limited by their technology. So um, when when people started recording music commercially, Instead of just um, Thomas Edison, you know, recording his wife singing or whatever it was, mm-hmm. you know, just for fun, just for a, the technology. He was a scientist, you know, he, mm-hmm. was, he was experimenting and stuff. But and then it took the, the, you know, the marketers and the business people to think, hmm, how can we actually use this practically yeah. um, to make money? Um, and then they started to think, right, what's, what's the technology we have right now to hand that we can use? So by the time it became commercially viable we were selling vinyl discs um which are a certain size just you can only fit a certain amount on those things just because of the nature of the material and it and typically an album or an lp or a is 12 inch 12 inch vinyl is that is that that right Uh, i I can't remember so yeah i don't know i'm not a big vinyl buff um, you could fit roughly 12 songs depending on the length of the, of the songs but you could fit 12 songs on there so it just it just musicians wrote enough songs to fill one of these discs and it just happened to be 12 songs so we have got this notion in our head that an album is 12 songs yeah 12 to 10 songs yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's completely arbitrary now so I will get onto that mm. so a vinyl could typically hold around 12 tracks. So that medium of album became dictated, that those rules were dictated by the materials that they were using. Yeah. Um, So what they used to do is there would be a team, a sort of committee of people would decide what tracks on that album could be taken off and put on a... A little single so you had yeah. little single discs as well that would have an a side and a b side so yeah. they would they would they would sell because these discs were reversible you could put a song on the top and the song on the bottom so that came that became the a a b a, yeah. a side b side thing um so you used to have your main single track that you thought was going to sell and then you would yeah. put another one underneath it was maybe a bit of a wild card mm-hmm. um i'm thinking uh classic a side b side single from the 60s would be Eleanor Rigby and Yellow Submarine. Right. But I think it, it I can't remember which, I think it was a Yellow Submarine single with Eleanor Rigby on the B-side. Interesting. I think that's yeah. the way they marketed it. Yeah. Um, because they thought Yellow Submarine would sell sell the record and then they would put Eleanor Rigby on the back of it because it was slightly more experimental. It was a wee bit of a wild card. Uh, At that point in the Beatles career, like it was all like ditty pop songs and then there was this really kind of strange like you know new sound quite serious like almost symphonic kind of yeah yeah um so that that's what artists would do they would like um see what they could do with that limitation of like Mm -hmm. the the uh 
tool, the totally. whatever. Um, yeah. So generally, um, back then, people people would buy singles, but they would also buy the album. So say there was two or three songs that you liked, you would have to buy the whole album. Yeah. Right. So the big the big discs had usually six tracks on each side. Yeah. Um, and to total side tangent, they used to have to. Um, think about where they were going to place it on the disc as well. Really? Yes, because the inside of the disc, if you think uh, podcast people who are, can't see video, it's a big disc. Uh -huh. Everyone knows what a vinyl looks like, well, if you're a certain age <laughs> or you're just educated. Um, the Obviously, when you go around the, the outer circumference of the, yes. the disc, there is more surface area yeah. on, that, on that bit. So the needle can travel a further distance, but in the in the center, yeah. it's a smaller circle. Yeah, right. Okay. Meaning that the information would be less quality in the center. So interesting. I didn't know that. So you you could put uh, like fast songs, slow songs, depending on where they are in the record. Mm -hmm. They would they would sound different. They would be slightly better quality in different parts of the record, and that was up to the 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 mastering engineer to the artist going right we need to put track this this fast track at this point in the the lp because because of the surface area you can squeeze less information into into certain parts of the disc so there are some songs that wouldn't work on certain parts of the disc because it wouldn't sound right you would be missing out on certain frequencies interesting um i didn't know that low frequencies uh-huh don't work as well in the center as they do in the outside so, huh. so big bassy, big dance songs would be at the beginning of the the out, outer edge, because as you know, low frequencies are bigger. They're yeah. bigger. They're yeah, they're yeah, slower, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you can't cram that into a smaller space. Um, it's really complicated, uh, but yeah. that is really that's really interesting. But that's a little that. a little um, limitation again, and, mm. and it pushes the creativity of how an album flows, and it kind of dictates what you're going to do, yeah, and where you're going to place it. Um, you might notice if you play a, a vinyl, what you can do is play track one and and pay attention to the bassiness of the track, lift the needle and put it on the last song in the inner inner side. The the bassiness will be different. It won't be as thumpy. It might be a wee bit more muddy. Um, huh. So the, the, the actual timbre of the, the sound changes depending on where the needle is on the, on the record. Mm. It's quite interesting. Anyway, interesting. complete side tangent. But yeah. No, no, that, that's cool. That's why tape would have been superior superior at the time. Yes, because it's the same all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all of their music was recorded uh, on magnetic tape. Uh, yeah. I, another fun side tangent. Um, my my fiance's uncle used to have an actual <coughs> tape machine back in the 70s and the reason he had that was his uh, his dad used to work in used to work in bbc right. so he had loads of access to like you know really really fancy technology so while all the scrubs were listening on vinyl he was he was listening <laughs> he was to music tapes. on tape oh wow really <laughs> yeah good. um you know uh which is which is kind of crazy to sort of think about you know yeah um, um tape tape obviously was recorded on tape and then it was mm -hmm. it was transported onto vinyl yeah um for whatever reason i don't i don't even know if you where you'd be able to get a sure uh, like a reproduction of the tape surely it must have been a thing for like you can the still buy serious aud audio files yeah you can still buy them um we're not talking about cassette tapes no like, like big big old Tape decks like um, yeah. your Studers and all that. I mean, they like tens of thousands of pounds those ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, people were buying a lot of albums. You know, they were buying a full album to get two or three singles. Yeah. Um, if they or they would buy the singles individually, depending on what was released. But if there was a song that wasn't released as a single, but it was on the album, you had to buy the whole album. Mm -hmm. So that was fine. And then CDs came along in the late 70s, 80s. Uh, they became proper, like, yeah. popular in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. Um, and CDs um, also were quite limited because they, they only had enough memory to fit, you guessed it, between 12 and 15 songs. Interesting. On an album. Yeah. So they... They could only fit this roughly the same amount of songs as a as a vinyl. 
Right. Uh, so you could fit on more. I mean, it's song uh, length and file yeah. size and all that. But at 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit um, yeah. WAV files, yeah. uh, you're typically like 15 songs max. Mm-hmm. Um, so people. People have been re- releasing albums, even to this day, with roughly 10 to 15. Yeah, standard number is a, is about, <clears throat> yeah, it's 10 songs. And yeah. nowadays, you it doesn't matter because the, there's no... There's no limitation. There's, there's no limitation anymore. Yeah. So people are like arbitrarily setting this this yeah. number based on something that was actually a, a real limitation. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I think it's more... Uh, something that I've seen definitely a lot is that it's not even just like a set number of songs. Sometimes it's just the length. It's like everything, like all albums are between like 40 minutes to like an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. That's right. Um, so like that's another thing that people are sort of like sticking to. They're like, right, we need to, mm-hmm. we're going to make an album, so we're going to make an hour's worth of music. And that would mean like if you're, band writes like one and a half minute you know two minute songs which there are bands like that you know um then you're gonna have like <laughs> you're gonna have an album of like 20 tracks mm. yeah <laughs> which is just ridiculous but and another thing i should say is the song length in the past was heavily heavily dictated by um the fact that it was going to be played on radio yeah so, that too. Yeah. so like two two minute, three minute songs, pop songs were heavily favoured by labels, you know, because um, they wanted they wanted really 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 good songs in really really short spaces to just fire out in the radio, mm-hmm. um, one after the other, because yeah. the the sort of real estate of of radio play was so valuable, like mm-hmm. because everybody listened to the radio. Yep. Like the the or top of the pops was a massive one in the UK. Yeah. If you could get on top of the pops, you basically were guaranteed a number one the following week. Um, yeah. And because like tens of millions of people tuned in to watch Jimmy Savile uh, host the, the top of the pops. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody everybody uh, went in, so it it was extremely valuable to yeah. get your music on there. Um, such a weird concept now when you when you watch those old Top of the Pops uh, YouTube videos, it's like... Yeah, I mean, I, I guess we still have... We have, like, a lo- our own little, like, um, YouTube equivalents now. I'm thinking, like, the Tiny Desk concerts and yep. KEXP Radio and stuff like yep. that. It's, you know, that format is still there. It's not as big, but it's... Uh, you, you don't get a lot of pop stars on there. Occasionally on Tiny Desk, you do. But they're, you know, they're all like indie, it's the same idea. indie artists. But it's the same idea. Yeah. It's the same idea. It's just there's less. It's more diluted. Mm-hmm. Um, not everybody knows about it, but everybody no. knew about Top of the Pops, um, and the Ed Sullivan Show, and like it was big, mm-hmm. big. I mean, tens Huge. of millions of yeah. people. Um, so that dictated song length because you wanted a little sound bite. Same, same with news, right? So the the sort of traditional news broadcasters would like they would bring someone on you know to have a tv debate and it would be like five minutes long whereas now it's all done in podcasts over three hours <laughs> um and, yeah, and or a youtube live stream or whatever yeah. yeah and it's because like tv and radio uh airtime was so expensive yeah whereas now you can buy a laptop and a mic and a preamp uh for like 200 quid or 300 quid off you go and off you go you're a broadcaster um no one will listen to you but that's another thing (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's a little marketing problem so yeah a a lot of these um tendencies and rules are all based in a world that doesn't exist anymore song length and oh we must keep it you know radio radio friendly and all like why (laughs) Like, it's, like, so irrelevant now. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, on the rare occasions that I do listen to the radio, it's usually when I'm, uh, you know, driving somewhere. Like, hmm. like song lengths are, like, have gone up. Like, mm-hmm. people just play, like, longer songs now on the radio. So it doesn't even matter. It's because it's worth less. Yeah. The airtime's worth less now. Yeah. So they can afford it. Yeah. 
It's crazy. Um, because like there used to be a, if you got on Radio One, mm-hmm. um, that was it. You were you were you were made. If you got on top of the pops, you were number one. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's it's not like that at all. It's it's such a. No, well, no, who wants to be on UK Top Forty now? Really, I mean, it's if you get there, great. But as a thing to strive for, maybe in the seventies, yeah, you were, you were trying to get on top of the pops and get marketing because that was the only way you could get to an audience is through the gatekeepers. Whereas now you don't need them. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get to your audience directly, um, which is kind of what we talk about all the time in this podcast. Um, you don't need to rely on labels and mm. all that stuff you can do this on your own now so yeah there's no there's no reason to have like a 12 song album or a 15 song album or a four minute long song or a three minute long song you can have a 15 minute long song i mean people have been doing this for a few years the prog guys have been doing it since the 70s yeah um so yeah it's it's more it's more about the type of music you do and it's the create it's creative decisions rather than mm. Uh, technological mm. uh, lack of technology or whatever yeah. so I'm going to move on to EPs um, we'll get on to the why it's pointless thing yeah. right there so EPs um, if I'm right is it extended play so mm-hmm. extended play so EPs were like medium sized vinyls yeah. that could like house like three to five I think tracks yeah. maybe less Um so there was three di- disc sizes, if I'm if I'm right, because I, I used to have a record player um, in my bedroom, but it broke, uh, <laughs> and I didn't have any vinyls to play on it. So, yeah, it had single size and then the big size, and I think there was a medium one. I didn't have any medium size discs, um, and I think those were EPs, mm-hmm. but I never owned any. Right. Um, EPs EPs became more popular when CDs came in. Yeah. Um, because. Uh, it made sense from from a CD standpoint where maybe you were a band that you had more than one song but you didn't have enough to fill an album. You would make an EP and you would go out your gigs and sell CDs and you would yeah. you, you would have a, a little like five track EP and it would be quite cool. But now uh, it's all changed again because for the first time ever, you don't have to buy the whole album to get the single. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't true five, ten years ago, because uh, iTunes, you, I think if it was over a certain amount, it was like a pound each. You could buy a s- singles. Yeah, it's like ninety nine p. Yeah. Um, but be- before that, it was um, there was no digital at all, and there was no streaming. So it was like if the, if the song wasn't released on single, you were screwed, and you had to buy the whole damn thing. So, um. Now people aren't buying albums at all. They're not buying singles at all. No. They just stream the song they want. Yeah. Um, they just make playlists of songs. So I, I, an artist coming out with an album of of material, it's just, it makes no sense now. The only reason you would do that now is for a, like storytelling purposes or yeah. to make a big, cohesive, yeah. or, artistic thing. Or just as an, you know just to archive it, uh, you know, have it all in one place, just like, there it is. There it is, yeah. You know. A collection of. Yeah, here's here's the here's the collection of songs that I've, that I've made, you know. So, th- think about it from a purely modern day sort of thing I was saying to you uh, earlier. Um, so, when you release a, a single... If you're a band, you you know you've just released a song and you've you've put it out there and it gets pretty decent engagement because you've not done anything in a while and you've put something out. They go, wow, it's great, amazing. Um, we'll call that the benchmark. So that's like a hundred percent engagement for that one. We'll call that one. If you were to release, say, a month or two later, a five track EP. Would you get five times the engagement as you got in that one? No. Oh. No, you wouldn't. Uh, so why do people still release EPs? F- uh, from 2021 right now. Yeah. It's, uh, 
Um, uh, I, yeah, it's it's just a, it's a bit silly. From a marketing standpoint, it makes yeah, no sense it at do, all. It doesn't make any sense now, no. EPs are great. I mean, I love EPs because it's like a we three to five tracks and it's just like boom, 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 boom. Mm. Great. But the way they're released, this is just, I'm just talking about how they're released, makes uh, no sense to me. No. Um, and we're going to go back, because you mentioned uh, Liam Shortle, uh, episode, I want to say 18. Yeah. It's could be. Quite ages ago. Uh, we did quite an, far back. An yeah. interview with Liam. Um, go back and listen to that, because it's great. Um, he, mm. he knows his stuff. Um, he does. What he, what he found accidentally was... <laughs> Um, by pure accident, um, that releasing a single every three weeks for a year is just an absolute formula for success. Yeah, because if if he released, um, do the math, a song every three weeks for a year, a song every three. What's weeks. that like? Fifteen songs, something like yeah, uh, yeah, 15, maybe like fifteen, twenty songs, something like that. Yeah, something like that. If he had released that all in one day, <laughs> if, it, if it had like a 20th of the engagement oh, yeah. of what like, he get, got. You like know. the first song would have probably gotten a few plays and then after that it would just be like... <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Yeah, nothing. Pretty much like how our, our album dropped in 2018. Because um, mm -hmm. we, we, were, we were... We didn't really know. Yeah. Our, our album was 11 songs. 11? Eleven tracks. Eleven, tracks, Eleven yeah. tracks, and we dropped it all in one day. <sighs> like I really regret doing that. So, well, I mean, in, in hindsight, we, we know better now. But <laughs> yes. Um, so <sighs> this this is where I get into the whole oh, recording an album versus releasing an album. Um, from an artistic standpoint, recording albums is it's great fun. It's very creative from a like a storytelling thing like or making a cohesive coherent collection of work um that still makes sense creatively and musically but releasing it all in one package does not um and like well if you're doing a concept album and the tracks bleed into each other you have to release it as it's because it's like you can't release a chapter of a book on its own <laughs> no it doesn't make sense but if the, if the tracks can stand up on their own mm-hmm then I think you should 100% of the time release them one by one over a period of time. Yeah. Um, whether it's every two weeks, every three weeks. Or, or just, you know, re release your singles kind of a thing, you know. Yes. Like, look at the ones that you're like, yeah, these, these ones are really, really strong. Bang, bang, fire those out. Yes. Over a, over a period of time and then once those have gotten the engagement you can be like oh here's an ep with a couple of extra songs that you haven't heard yes you know that's a really good yeah. um <clears throat> way of going about it or like um the way that liam did it was he was just releasing song every three, three weeks. weeks and then eventually he was just like here's volume one of, of a all bunch the songs of all the songs that we've yeah. released so far bang and then you know if you're if you're looking for it, you know that they're all there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you don't have to like go one by one. You know, mm. and like, or if you want to buy, buy them. You mm. know, instead of having to buy them one by one, you can just bang buy all of them. You know, whatever. Or it's genius streaming. Or what I've seen some to. bands do, which I really love the idea of, is um, they maybe they have an EP, mm -hmm. um, but they release um single by single so they go single one whoa you know three weeks later or a month later single two yay and then they get to single five and it's they release it and then they release an ep with the collection of all those five songs plus two live tracks mm -hmm. of or live versions or acoustic versions or something of yeah. the five tracks so they do an ep launch yeah and then record it properly they put the video up on YouTube and they put the music up on Spotify and it's the live version of track two or track three or whatever, or acoustic version to go along with it. Because when you, when you release, you've got the, you've got that flow of stuff, like here's a track, here's a track. And then you get to the end, it's like, here's a brand new album. And you go, oh, a brand new album. 
oh, it's just all the stuff I've already heard. You feel like you've been cheated. So you have to add in, like you said, some stuff that they've not heard mm. in with it as well. Yeah, it doesn't have to be live tracks. It can just be like just a couple of extra songs. New know? songs, yeah. Yeah, just one or two new songs kind of a thing. That you were going to release anyway. Yeah. Um, as, a, as a thing. You can do that as well, yeah. If you, mm. if you can't get a, a, a different type of recording. Sometimes bands do that in here where we'll finish doing an album or an EP mm. and they'll say, can we do some acoustic versions you know two or three acoustic versions and they'll just keep them in case they need extra stuff to release mm -hmm. in those kind of situations mm -hmm. and it works really well yep and it's been a lot of fun sometimes doing albums like that where you've got the full band version and then you've got an acoustic version it's fun um and live versions at gigs and stuff just yeah it's it's a different way of thinking about it like i, I can hear people going oh, but marketing oh it's so like oh. <laughs> it, should, it should be about the music and yes it still is about the music but if you're not if if, if your band isn't like if, if your band isn't commercially commercially viable um i mean that's not why you do it obviously but yeah if it's yeah. not if it's not uh making a splash out there and, and engaging with people then you're just making music for yourself i mean I know plenty of people do that and that's fine. So, yeah. But why put it on Spotify? If you're going to make music for yourself and, and then put it on Spotify, why are you doing that? Like You can just have it on your phone as a file in a folder Yeah. if you're just making it for yourself. Exactly. And I, I mean, people have done that. I know people mm -hmm. who have recorded some songs and they've never released them. Uh, I've, I've recorded two albums worth of material with a, an artist uh, that's been in a good few times. We're talking... 25 songs but and he's never released them he just he always wanted to record an album but he doesn't want to release it he just wants to have it and he's he's got some cds and he hands it out to friends and family fair enough okay that's great that's fine if you want to do but that doesn't want to release it on the mainstream platform you have no interest in that at all he's just a, a, that's absolutely fine mm -hmm. um but if you're releasing it on a platform like yeah <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I know. It's just um, yeah, I, I, you, I do, I have come across this quite a lot. It's just this whole like, you know, I, I think it's kind of expected. You know, if you're in a band and you're and you're making music and you're wanting to play gigs and you're recording albums, I'm kind of assuming at that point naturally you want to make, you're basically turning your band into. Uh, uh, you know, a a, a business. It is know, a business. A, a, yeah. It's a business, a partnership with like a bunch of other people. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, I'm always amazed at the sort of hesitancy around that. She's like, oh no, it's you know, it's about the music. It's not about money. It's just like, well. You know, we don't live in a we don't live in a communist utopia, so it is about money, <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, yep. <laughs> you know that's it's always going to be about uh, it's always going to be about money. You want people to hear your things, yeah. you know. You want to be able to make more music. You need yeah. money to make music, yep. so therefore it, it is about money. And if you want to make money, you need to, you know, adapt. You yep. know, uh, and you'll see that all all the bands that are doing really well are adapting you know like uh, there's there's um you know like a, a lot of younger uh younger musicians now you know who use tiktok you know are are taking full advantage hmm. of tiktok and making tiktokable songs you know because uh, part of the whole uh, platform is is that you can you can make videos and you put music in the background you know so um a whole part of it is just like you know making a song that people are going to want to use as part of a meme or something you know you, you, so it's a new um, medium yeah and like vinyl exactly and like people are um clearly wising up to the whole you know releasing um releasing singles and tracks and things like bigger artists are doing it now like a uh, lord has released a new track. Um, it's Solar Power, I think it's called. I'm not a fan <laughs> of it, gotta be honest. It's the most claustrophobic listening experience I think I've ever had. Um, you should, you should, go, you should listen to it. 
Um, it's the production on it is 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 interesting. Claustrophobic. Yeah, everything's really close up. So okay. like the the vocals are like right in your ears, oh, the guitar yeah. is like right in there, and everything's just like eh, and uh, uh, I'm all. Um, I'm 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 already claustrophobic, so it's it was just a little <laughs> bit like <laughs> a little bit much for me. Um, but you know, she didn't just drop an album. It was there. Right. You go. Here's here's a single. Yep. And uh, I'm assuming she's gonna drop another single in a, in a in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, even people that aren't musicians, just YouTubers, already know that. You know, and they're just dropping singles. You know, I'm thinking yeah. of people like, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Is it Dream? It's the M Minecraft speedrunner who okay. uh, apparently has been, there's some like cheating allegations or something like that. You know, um, Corp's husband as well. He's been uh, releasing music just as singles, basically. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, people. Well, it's, it's like internet-minded people. Yeah, uh, they they already know what the new model is because the YouTube model and the music model is virtually the same. It's more or less exactly um, the same, and it's when uh, it's interesting seeing those two worlds kind of collide because musicians are now making really, really, you know, the, you know, basically when the single drops nine times out of ten you are going to see a music video drop with that single yeah you yeah. know yeah. um you know might be if you know the more money you have you know pr probably the the, the the better music video you can make but um having said that you can if you've got um if you've got a modern iphone or modern smartphone in general you can get with a 4k camera on it um all you need really is uh you can get a little tripod or a gimbal if mm -hmm. you if you want to invest. So you, you can walk around with your phone without it jumping around. Like, yeah. Um, Unless you want the jumpy footage, like some people might yeah, want that. As a creative thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um you can get a gimbal for like a couple of hundred pounds. Editing software is free. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I use DaVinci you do need a pretty <coughs> beefy computer to use it, but DaVinci Resolve is free. Yeah. And yep. industry professionals use it, you know, so yeah. Um, you can you can technically shoot your own music video if you think that's a, like a oh no like I can record this and mix and master my own stuff or you know and I can distribute it myself but oh I can't record a, a music video you kind of can um, for not that much money I mean will it be any good well, it depends on how creative you are um, obviously not not everyone's going to be you're going to need to practice it. You're going to need to learn how all the all the technical stuff works. That can be quite daunting, um, but it is possible. Um, there's endless resources out there explaining how it all works. But the actual like, oh, should I use this frame for this shot and this and that? That that stuff you need to just learn um, through trial and error. And like that's what you have to be now. Um, part of leveling up your band is you kind of have to learn. Or at least be aware of all the different things that traditionally a label would have to take care of, mm -hmm. because now you can take care of all this yourself, or at least know that it exists. Yeah. Um, so that I mean, if there's a thing in your band that you're like, "Oh, I'm really, really bad at doing this thing," um, you can get someone to do it for you. You can go and pay a professional to go and do it for you. You can still do that. Um, and if you're commercially viable, then you'll have money aside to do that. Like, if I'm uh, like I'm terrible at drawing, me personally, I, I I would never be able to design an EP cover. Um, so I just hire someone to do it, um, mm. and I use the band's money to do it. Um, and if if the band wasn't commercially vi viable, then I would have to get out my stick figures and, and my yeah. my colored pencils. I'm sure <laughs> you would, I'm sure you could do a pretty decent uh, oh photo photo job. Photoshop job. Photoshop job, yeah. Yes. Take a, take a photograph and then Photoshop it. Yes. I could probably do that, yeah. Do some weird stuff with it. It'd be pretty bad, but... Eh, meh. Whatever. Um, just, it's creative. It's just jazz. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just uh, just be like Madonna and, 
and fall on your ass and then just say you meant it. It's <laughs> <laughs> part of the dance routine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah. So I, th- I think the moral of the story is: don't stop recording albums and EPs, but yeah, yeah. stop releasing them like that. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, don't release them sh- straight away. Release mm. them, just not straight away. You know, like don't blow your load like uh, already at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like. Ah, music! There you go. <laughs> like, um, just yeah. Give you know, like, and people have been doing like even as far back as like even David Bowie understood this. You know, uh, this is more with audience interaction. You know, he would like give him a little sneak peek. You know, maybe appear for like a couple of seconds. You know, and like maybe talk to one or two people, and then run away and hide. And people just wanted to see him more. You yeah. know, it's. Same idea, but with music. I've got a perfect yeah. analogy to that. Have you seen Rogue One? No, I have not seen Rogue One. Last uh, Star Wars film that I watched was Eight, and that was with you, and we were both sorely disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the worst film ever, possibly. Oh, um, I haven't <clears> even seen Nine. Nine, nine is... Anyway, it's, uh, it's, that's cr- a, that's a, it's that, crap that's as well, but it's for different reasons. Um, right. So in Rogue One... Spoiler alert, um, Darth Vader's in Rogue One. Um, and because he's such an iconic character, everyone wants to see him. The director deliberately put him in sort of pivotal scenes and portrayed him in extremely dramatic ways um, and only gave you like little tasters of it, right? He didn't yeah. give you just all Vader because you would have just been like, you know, too much, too much. Um, you would have just gotten bored of everything else. So he just gives a little bit of Vader with James Earl Jones still doing the voice like oh so good Um, he just gave you a little bit of it through the movie to just keep you oh oh yeah Um, but not not so much that it was like on board Um, and that see that when when they overdo it Mm -hmm. like oh maybe there's a band I follow or something and you look on their Facebook or whatever, they've just released an album and you're like, oh no, and you go on Spotify and the whole 12 tracks have just been released and you're like, yeah. no, you could, you could have you could have generated so much more hype mm-hmm. if you had just incrementally gone track one, week, you know, week one then week three, track two or, you know, work, yeah. work it out and and again, we, we say as well, like if you're if you're trying to recoup costs, if you've dipped into your own pocket f- to pay for recording or whatever, um, releasing the material on Bandcamp first. So what you could do, yeah, little model here, you can totally take this. Um, if you're if you've got material right now and you're like, oh, how, how, we don't really know how we're going to release this, consider this: you've got twelve tracks or ten tracks or eight tracks, yeah, and you're going to release them all. Start week one. Mm-hmm. Release it on Bandcamp and announce it to everywhere. This is this is here, and if you want it, you can either um, I, I don't know if it's subscription based or you just pay for it. Um, yeah, you just pay for it once. Yeah, right. So you pay for it, and then you've got it forever on Bandcamp. Yeah, right? so uh, on you know, and you can download it in whatever files and you, you like. And if you think that's scammy or whatever, it's not because if people really want to hear your stuff, then they'd be willing to pay you for it and support you. Um, yeah. So you can fr- you can frame it as um, we've got some brand new material and we're so excited to share it. Uh, we're going to be putting it up on Bandcamp, and if you want to support us, you can go ahead and buy f- buy that single and have a listen. You'll have it forever, and it's going to be released on the the platforms later. But mm-hmm. if you want to hear it now, we'd really appreciate the res- the support to you know recoup some of the costs that you know yeah bah, you bah, could bah. even do you know like like the video game industry you could totally do like a whole pre-order thing yeah putting a little pre-order bonus or even just delay the digital release that you can buy and be like if you want to buy it you're gonna have to buy the physical thing and then we'll give you a download link with it you know like you can really be creative with this really be creative with it <clears throat> you know um you know and manipulate 
people. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> it's not about manipulating people. <laughs> it's, well, you know, I mean, maybe that's a, it's a little too strong, but you know what I mean. It's about like you know, creating scarce, like artificial sort of like scarcity. scarcity right. Aye. So yeah. because like dropping your whole your whole album in one day, like nobody's gonna just listen to all of that. They're just they're going to listen to the first three tracks and get bored. And Only person that's going to do that is is me because yeah. I'm a freak. I'm I not going like, to do that. I I listen to albums in one go. <laughs> but but when I've been doing that when, since I was when, like fourteen. <laughs> when Liam dropped a track, yeah. Oh, cool. It's, let's listen. To let's it. listen. Oh, that's like, cool. If he had dropped the whole album, would I have listened to all of it in one sitting? Hell no. I wouldn't have because it's like what an hour. Of music, an hour and a half of music, an, an hour and a bit of like you know really heavy jazz. Yeah, you know, it gets it's, it's, yeah it's mentally quite, taxing. It's if heavy, you're not yeah. prepared for it, you know. Um, so, your week one, you release it on Bandcamp or Patreon or whatever, um, and say you wait three weeks and you release track two on Bandcamp, and maybe track one gets released on Spotify. <gasps> right. Yeah. And then three weeks after that, track three comes out on Bandcamp and track two goes on Spotify. Yeah. So it's like boom, 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 all the way until you yeah. finish the whole album and then you release the full album in its entirety with bonus tracks mm -hmm. on Spotify. Or, yeah. or you, know, you can decide. But so that it's like, a, it's like a conveyor belt where it comes from you, goes on to Bandcamp, and then it gets shifted along each time something else gets released. It gets shifted along and into the free platforms, you know, Apple Music, Spotify thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that way, um, you're st obviously the, the the advantages of having Spotify and Apple Music is it's just you you'd be stupid, like unbelievably stupid, not to release your music on those platforms. You'd be dumb as hell, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, but you are. Um, yeah. But it doesn't mean that you can't delay it. And, mm. and go on Bandcamp first and say, look, we're not signed. <laughs> no one, no, you know, big millionaires paying for our stuff. We are paying for this out of our own pocket. And if you really appreciate what we're doing, send us some money. And if you can't afford it, it'll be out in three weeks on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. We're going to release this for free eventually. Yeah. So it's kind of the, the true fans that really love your music get a chance to support you. Yeah. Um, and... The, the people who just want to listen to your music and don't want to pay for it can also do that just at a later date. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, personally. Mm. Because you're, you're, like we say, oh, you're manipulating people. But I don't <laughs> think you are because you're, you're creating something yeah. that people find valuable. That's why they like you. So you're, you're adding value to them. And if, yeah, they yeah. Want, if they want to part with money for that value that you've given to them, That's true. why not? That's um, true. Uh, it's not it's not scamming uh, it, and what it what it does is instead of you know dumping your album all in one day you're continuing that story it's almost like a journey mm -hmm. for the entire length of that album yeah um and it, and it keeps the hype train rolling yeah um, i mean even like uh, this you know like if if you can you know get a separate uh, artwork done for each release as well you know like make everything each single each little like release <coughs> very distinct and then yeah yeah you know um mm -hmm. i know a lo loads of people that are doing that yeah um so some people are even um combining all their artworks at the end and then collaging yeah. them all into the album artwork yeah. So 12, or, 12 you know, singles or like whatever. somebody or you could just take like one aspect of the album art and just like there you go. Drop it. Yeah. That's the that's the album art for this release or whatever. Yeah. So and, so you do your album artwork and then you like crop the image so that there's like nine squares in in the the whole thing and then you just have that that crop square. Guess what else that ties in well with Instagram. <gasps> <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh my god. So you can release a square and then when when you're releasing a square for each single on Instagram, when you're finished, it adds up to a whole picture on your on your tiled Instagram wall. Like, you, there's so many creative ways of tying this all up. And plus, what's cool as well is, I mean, these are musicians we're talking about. They're pretty creative people. You can think of pretty creative marketing strategies because um, creative people are not just creative in one domain. They're usually creative across lots of domains. So why not make 
the, the boring marketing part creative as well as the music and just make the whole thing an artistic venture rather than just being like, here's just the music and here's just, here, have it. Um, you could be creative about it. Um, tie it in with merch and just the, the whole thing. It's, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff you can get into rather mm -hmm. than just blowing your load to quote Julian Pombo 2021. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it's not the most eloquent way of putting it, but <laughs> it makes it's sense. very accurate. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that was kind of all I had on that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's kind of elaborating on things we've said before, but mm. um, I, I still see people re releasing entire EPs and entire yeah. albums and stuff. Uh, and the funny thing that I've noticed is that I think the people that are doing that are the ones that are in the more... Uh, shall I say, I guess now, like, they're not that old, but like the older genres, you know, progressive metal and like, you know, like uh, rock bands, some punk bands, you know, things like that. The, the you know, the, the cool bands that all the kids are listening to are basically doing what we just said that yeah. we should do, you yeah. know. Um, so stop that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if it's, uh, this is obviously we are catering to unsigned bands. Yeah. Um, like, take um, Dream Theater. Yes. Right. They've they've been going since the nineties, technically the eighties. Mm -hmm. uh, they are they're still releasing big albums. Yeah. Uh, they release two singles and then the big album. They have yeah. maybe two music videos, maybe one. But the the reason that they're they're still doing that is because. That's what they've always done, and their fans are going to listen to it anyway. Yeah, um, they don't need to release singles, really. No, they really um, don't. They they are they're kind of stuck in the old model. Yeah. Um, but it works for them. Uh, I do not recommend you do what they do or bands like that. Um, no, especially not now. You know, maybe like, maybe later. You know, like if you want, I don't know. It it does depend on on like Dream Theater. Obviously, has been a band for so long. They already know their they know their audience for really mm -hmm. really well and they know what they're going to respond to best you know yeah and i'd imagine that you know people that listen to you know dream theater are going to be people like me that like sit down and listen to the, the album thing, yeah. as a full experience you know that kind of thing so they already know that um but like i said a lot of their a lot of their stuff is concept based concept albums mm -hmm. and stuff with bleeding tracks tracks that you know, you, yeah. you can't tell where the, the divide is and you can't release that. They're basically by like rock symphonies, basically. You know, they've taken that, that whole idea and they've just made it into, a, you know, just modernised yeah. it, you know. Um, I think the, the thing to remember with like this whole marketing malarkey is mm. you've got to have a, a, a go-giver mentality. Mm. So um, there's this sort of concept in businessy type stuff is that uh, the best business practice is to give as much away for free as possible so mm -hmm. uh, you, you see this like the classic example is free sample right right so yeah. you, get, you get the free sample and then you're like, oh this is amazing yeah. and then you buy that's that's why i always go to dobies <laughs> <laughs> for, for the free samples yeah. it's not because i like garden centers <laughs> They'll, they'll just have something you know like the weirdest free samples you know it's just like when? here have this organic boar square sausage and I'm like yes yes please <laughs> yum, yum 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 oh that was amazing are you gonna buy nope <laughs> bye <laughs> <laughs> I was I was at uh, Edinburgh Castle before lockdown uh -huh. uh, back in the the old times the before yeah, times the, the, the elder days yeah and they were handing out free samples in one of the gift shops of Honey liqueur scotch whiskey. Ho, 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 ho. Like, I don't drink, but I could have drank that stuff by the gallon. And, like, it was so good. <laughs> I like, I've got quite a sweet tooth. Right. This yeah, was yeah. like, oh, this stuff was Me too, unbelievable. Man. And they were like, I almost considered buying a bottle. I was like, I don't drink. And I was <laughs> going to buy a bottle. It was like, it was like a 40 pound bottle of whiskey. Um, it's it was, not bad though. I mean, I, I mean, it's a liqueur. It wasn't really whiskey. It was like you would use it for like you'd mix stuff. it with something. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was only like a little thing. Um, yeah. But 
It was so good. It was like it was like you could taste the honey and the the like sharp uh, whiskey notes and all. Oh, it was so good. I, I enjoyed it so much. But it's that whole free sample. It's the it's the drug dealer package. It's like here, have a little sample, and then you're <laughs> you're hooked on it. You have to go back yeah, and get yeah, yeah. right. So keep that in mind. Don't scam people. That's not what business is about. Business no. is not about scamming people. What it is is about giving value to people. Yes. Um. Uh, if if you're if you're scamming people, you're not a very good business person, and you won't last very long because people can find out pretty quickly that you're a scammer, and they just they just go away from you. Mm. Um, so the the whole the whole bandcamp thing, you might be like, oh, I'm going to release it in a couple of weeks, and people don't have to pay. That's their choice. As long as you're upfront that you're going to do that, don't be like, here it's going to be on Bandcamp only, and then you release it on Spotify. People will be pretty pissed off with you. Yeah, like be straight. You know, just like, be like, it's it's on Bandcamp first. You know, yeah. and it's going to be, you know, there until blah blah blah, yeah. and then that's when I'm yes. going to re- release it for free. You know, yeah, because the people who back you and go, yes, I'm going to do this because they're not going to, you know put it on Spotify, they're just going to be releasing on that. And then you do release on Spotify, they'll be like, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, but be up be up front and say, look, mm-hmm. this is why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you decide to do something like a, you know, like a pre-order bonus thing, really, you know, actually do it, you mm-hmm. know. Don't promise that. And then there's a bunch of people sitting there going, but where's my free, where's my thing that I'm supposed to get? You know, <clears> like... Wh- that's another she, thing yeah. is is people um people who don't give a uh, good value that's that's a bad thing and people who say they're going to give something and then don't so the two sort of main things in business is uh, uh give as much value as as much as you can for for as little as you as you can possibly make mm-hmm. it and number two uh under promise and over deliver Mm-hmm. Um, so say, oh, we're, we're going to give you, um, for this package, you're going to get two songs. And then surprisingly, you give them a little extra something like a free t- ticket to a gig or something, right? You just work and don't tell them you're going to do it. And they'll go, whoa, that's cool. You know, free thing. Um, you, you get that and like, say, say you order something online, like a, a set of drumsticks and they give you free plectrums or something right they'll throw something in for free they didn't tell you you were going to get it so the vendor promised to say you're going to get drumsticks and then it comes in the mail and you get a packet of peanuts or something <laughs> something something free that they're yeah. throwing in you're like oh yeah yeah, yeah. I've, that's uh i think that happened with when i when i got the witcher 3 on <coughs> uh ps4 i didn't just get the witcher 3 i also got like a bunch of stickers and like the um soundtrack yeah, you know, it's just like, and I didn't pay extra for it. Yeah, it's just like this is that. the standard. Like here you go, and I was like, huh, that's pretty cool. You know, that's how it should be for all all things. Like you, you yeah. get a wee surprise. Like oh, this is this is included. I didn't even know it wasn't even written in the thing. This is what I was going to get. Yeah, yeah. Happens with it. Um, Rachel buys a lot of. Um, she does a lot of like calligraphy and art, stuff like that. And when she buys like new pens and mm. things like that, the the person that she, uh, the company she buys them from, you know, will like put in a little extra. Here's some like little fa- cute paper clips or post-it notes or you know some like weird Japanese candy, you know, like stuff like that. And it's like, oh, that's nice. And you basically kind of want to do the same, same thing, you know. Um, it's adding value. Um, yeah. And, and they'll, stickers they'll, are a good one, man. Like stickers aren't expensive. You can make some really nice vinyl stickers. Yeah, your band logo and or your band artwork or whatever. Yeah. Sign copies of stuff. I'll um, stick it on my guitar, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Stickers everywhere. Um, stickers for days. Yeah. Um, and even just we like written hand notes, like thanks so much for this purchase, blah blah blah. If you're sending out things, mm-hmm. uh, I quite like to do like little like a wee written thing just saying thank you and mm-hmm. blah 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 um, and you could even get your bandmates to sign it if you want um, yeah. little things like that little token like token gestures and, and, and stuff like that you don't want people to buy the thing and be like I've got the thing cool that's it right give them a little bit extra um, mm-hmm. um, this it's, it's not it's not 
business tactics. It's just being nice. It's just being, it's just trying to make, make someone go, oh, that was really nice. I've never had that before. That was, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, you feel like you've been properly served. You, you get it in a restaurant where you get like free mints. That's, a, that's another classic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you get like, you know, biscuits or whatever, you know. Yep. Um, Chinese restaurants do it all the time. You've ordered Fortune a bunch cookies. of food. They're like, here, have some prawn crackers. <laughs> you know, like, or, like uh, you know, or like, here's a couple of extra cans of like Coke or whatever, just on the house, you know, yeah, yeah. because you spent a stupid amount of money in a, yeah. for takeout, you pig. <laughs> and, and bad business people think, oh no, that's going to co cost, that's going to hurt our bottom line. It's going to hurt us. But it doesn't, um, what it does is it makes people like go, huh, and we'll come back here. Yeah. You end up making more money from yes. from adding more value to people for, yes. no, you know. Yes. Yeah, so that's kind of a long-winded um, explanation as to why you should not release albums and EPs um, anymore. There's there's better, more modern ways of doing things. Um, mm. So can please consider them. If you if you've got material that you're sitting on and you're waiting to release and you weren't sure about your release strategy, nobody really thinks about it. They think, oh, I'll just uh, release on Spotify and yeah, and we'll be uh, famous. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's a little bit of in between <laughs> there. Um, no, yeah, not not a lot of people really think about it. I always I always make a point of asking people when they come in to record. So what's the what's the release plan? You know what he's planning and doing, and it's usually. Uh, we're just gonna like do some gigs and uh, just, uh, just put on like Spotify and things like that. And I'm like, cool, but yeah, but how? How how are you gonna? Mm -hmm. Are you just gonna do it all? Or uh, I don't know. Like, may, may, may do a single. They don't know a lot of them. Some people have real plans, but people don't know. No. So yeah, share this episode. Um, hopefully, it helps mm -hmm. people just to even think. Oh. I didn't even think we could be creative in that regard. Yeah. Let's maybe look into it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you... No, like, spot on. Yeah. Just, um... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's tricky, because, like, we live in a bit of a... We live in a bit of a weird time where, like, stuff changes. I don't know if it's because... I mean, I'm only 26, but it's, I don't know if it's because I'm getting old, but it's just like, whoa, things move up along at a ridiculous pace now you know i don't know if it, it's probably always been like that you know um but things change really really quickly you know so you kind of you basically just try and keep on top of it as much as you can you know and this is one of the reasons that you know um maybe this would be this would be another good uh uh podcast episode you know mm -hmm. Actually, listen. You know, I I listen to pop music, or I try to li keep up with like you know what people are doing and um, what bands are popular now and things like that, just for curiosity, you know, and because I'm interested. Um, but yeah, you can you need to keep on top and see what people are doing. You know, try and see what the trends are not necessarily just to do what everybody else is doing mm. but just to take note what can you learn from that you know that kind of thing um sure like at, at the end of the day yeah it, it you could say that the whole like delaying a release thing is is is, is a trend now it might and that trend might last for a while it might die but it seems to be a trend that really really works yep you know so but it might not um, make sense this advice is very time dependent yeah and um, this podcast episode only makes sense right now uh, it might not make sense in five years no it might be something totally different and this advice no. would be really really bad yeah um, maybe in, in five years we start getting albums injected into our brains <laughs> who knows <laughs> why not um so yeah uh, it's very it's it's time dependent. Yeah. So go out and you know, get it done. Um, yeah, I, that's pretty much all I all I had on that. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. It's the creative part doesn't end with the music. The creative the creative part never really ends, and it should be taken right into the marketing. It should be taken right into the the release strategy. You know, it's not just the music you write. It's the the whole thing can be a creative thing, even how you release it. 
um, even your, your performance, your your everything. Everything should be thought of as a creative endeavor, including how you release music. It shouldn't be just like, oh, that's the creative part done now for the corporate marketing capitalist evil, you know, no. <laughs> Moguls. Right? <laughs> yeah. right, it shouldn't be like that. It should be, the whole thing should be a thought out creative process. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you're, as always, if you're enjoying the podcast, do, 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 do the reviews. Do the things. Do the things. You know, leave us a comment or a like or a subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or whatever you're listening to, you know. Um, follow the podcast on uh, Spotify or whatever. Give us a five star review or something. Yeah. Give us a review. <laughs> share it to people share yeah. it share it on social media or whatever if you think it's yeah if you've got if you, if you know a, a buddy that's still releasing albums like an idiot <laughs> send this album to them yeah send this podcast episode to them saying here's why you should stop doing that maybe you've been you've been saying to like a friend of yours oh you should not you shouldn't be doing that you shouldn't be releasing albums uh, and you can use this episode as as proof Look, see, there's other people that say this too, um, talking to you. Uh, so, yeah, we could maybe maybe do another episode on this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, going forward. Yeah, it's, it's sparking some ideas in mm -hmm. my head. So, yeah, hope you all have a fantastic week and I'm off to go and get my COVID vaccination. Yay! <laughs> uh, so... Hopefully, hopefully I'll see you next week. You're no, going to be okay. indestructible next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be just batting away COVID. Yeah. <laughs> just coming, going up to people, cough on me. <laughs> <laughs> just cough. I can take it. <laughs> Breathe on me. I can take it. <laughs> so until that, I'll tell. Until then, hope you have a good week, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.